morning you lot, it's, uh, it's Sunday, <clears throat> I've been playing with the car over the weekend and thinking about it during the week after working on it last week. The situation that we're in with the cams is that uh, I, I'm pretty sure I've worked out what's wrong now, um, I haven't worked out a full solution yet but I can give you a description of part of the, uh, the understanding of what's going on. Um, the documentation for the ECU Master is not great, I won't lie. Um, it's uh, lacking in a lot of areas. It, it relies on having a, an understanding of how ECUs work in general um, and also how uh, their specific coding works, which makes it difficult because we don't have any... It's, it's not open source. The, the mathematics behind how it works aren't open, so it, it takes a lot of guessing to get where we need to go. Uh, Part of that probably in future, I think I might start to write a bit of a, an instruction manual, maybe, or start doing some instruction videos on it. Um, we'll get into a little bit of it here. I've made a diagram to get us past the first bit of understanding of what's going on. Now, <clears throat> the trigger setup that I was using is effectively uh, what would be used for a 2JZ engine. That they use the same crank and crank cam triggers. They work in exactly the same way. Um, I had it set up initially uh, reasonably blindly and it ran fine, uh, in, even in sequential, absolutely fine. It wasn't until I started moving the cams we started to see these issues, which is why I didn't get to retro rides gathering. The, the engine would suddenly die and uh, then if I reset the ECU, the engine would restart fine, no issues. There was a lot of popping and banging as well when it did die. Um, now, <clears throat> I now understand that what was happening was the cams would uh, would move, uh, but because they didn't know the position, they would jump. So they would jump from one stop to the other. As it did that, it would lose its uh, position. So I've done a diagram, one second. Let's get you zoomed in, and I will describe what is going on, hopefully. As long as we can see that okay. Yeah, that's all good. Right, so effectively you've got your crank trigger looks something like this. So you've got a series of pulses that come through. In this case there's uh, 34 pulses total on the TJZ cam trigger. There'll be two missing teeth, which are here, and then it would see the next uh, round of teeth. So you effectively have um, 36 teeth total with two missing. Uh, with this, it doesn't, of course, know what is top dead centre and what is uh, the exhaust fire, uh, exhaust stroke or what is the compression stroke. So it doesn't know when to fire. If you're running um, your uh, spark as a or fueling the spark as batch, then you end up in a, a fine situation. The spark's wasted, the engine runs. If you want to run sequential, it needs to know whether or not it's on that compression stroke. So this is where the camshaft element comes in and you have a, a setup which has got uh, three evenly spaced teeth around the perimeter of the, the cam. So it looks something uh, like this. So you've got uh, a half moon and then there's a tooth, another tooth and then another tooth. So that, that's what the camshaft looks like uh, because it spins at half speed. It can then give you your whether or not you're on compression or exhaust on your uh, uh, on your crankshaft. Now the issue comes that I chose the first tooth on the cam um, to decide on what was top dead centre, which is fine if that's static because it doesn't move. The ECU, uh, in a very basic way, has to start calculating uh, the position every cycle of the engine and it uses these missing teeth to decide where it is. If, uh, so it relates the, this position to your cam and says, okay, I need to spark, say here, and, and does so. It does that by counting from this one and from these. Now the problem is if I move my cam, that tooth disappears, but it doesn't know that, so it thinks that this is the first tooth. And because of that, it then recounts and moves the spark somewhere else. In some cases it can jump 180 degrees, which is why the engine suddenly would just run like, well, it would run terribly, and then 
we would end up in a situation where it'd stop, I'd then reset it, switch off, switch on, it would then move the cam again and relearn that first tooth. So this cam moving and the teeth disappearing is part of the issue. So, <coughs> what I've done is I have moved it so that it learns this tooth uh, to work out where its position is. And so it doesn't matter what happens with that first tooth, it can always see this second one, it doesn't matter. Um, I've still got issues because now what's happening is when the cam moves, the what's known as the synchronisation tooth, one which it works out against the crank tooth where it is, that's now moving, which means the base cam position is moving. So I'm learning again is probably the best way of putting it. Um, that's effectively the situation we're in now. Uh, I'm, I've asked some questions on some forums and things and from the experts who, well from the guys who created the programming. Um, I think I think I will start putting this down in writing once I know what's going on so that uh, some other people, it makes life a little bit easier for other people. Um, how, what format that's going to be in or where it's going to be I don't know yet um, but uh, it does feel like there are some big gaps in the learning for aftermarket ECUs and um, a lot of the basic stuff is covered but some of the, the more in-depth stuff which is what we need with engines getting more complex um, is just not covered so that's where we are at the moment the car's running fine I've got no issues with it and it is drivable if I, if I just force the cams to be static but that's not the point <laughs> the whole idea with this is to get the cams moving so um, as soon as I've got some more updates I'll let you know what's going on but thank you very much guys